Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, we actually have even more crazy news coming out. There's going to be a lot of really big videos when it comes to all this type of stuff, when it comes to these ongoing court cases, especially throughout this weekend. But we're actually seeing even more kind of crazy and bigger news when it comes to, well, everything. Uh, number one, we're kind of seeing some really big drama between Xbox and PlayStation, where basically Xbox tried their best to go and sideswipe and yoink out Bethesda, as you guys know about that, from that acquisition. We're going to talk about that huge, huge, huge drama and how they kind of implicate up the gaming market. We also have some other big news too as well, just for general court news. Just a lot of crazy stuff going on. So if you guys have been enjoying these videos, I actually really do like doing these deep dives because it's just so gossipy filled and so much back and forth and just everything. So give me your thoughts and comments down below. As well, if any of you guys are brand new, make sure you guys are subscribed. We're going to try our best to keep on covering up as much of this as we possibly can. And as well, we have the Twitter and Twitch room down below. If you guys want to follow, hang out there, we'll probably be live up on Twitch. And of course, as well, the Amazon links too. And let's dive into the video. So in case you guys missed it or I missed our past few videos, there actually isn't ongoing court case right now at the FTC and Xbox, where even Jim Ryan himself has spoken. We're seeing Phil Spencer basically do a lot of line of questionings and be actually on the stage and have to basically go and be on oath and make sure everything he's saying is truthful. We're having lawyers coming out. We're having drama. We're having old drama. We're having acquisition drama. We're having every, like pretty much everything in between going on, and it's some kind of crazy stuff. So we're going to go talk about, well, all this. So very first and foremost, one of the biggest stories out here is that Xbox themselves specifically went and stole Bethesda due to the looming and huge PlayStation market share and basically they're really kind of like growing popularity and they felt like they had to essentially go and steal Bethesda from the open market to allow the basically competition to grow and allow them to actually have a chance to compete with PlayStation. Now I can probably wear that a little bit on the worse or side but there's some big news when it comes to this because there is apparently now supposed to be a confirmation that Starfield was going to actually go and skip Xbox prior to the Zenimax acquisition and just a lot of stuff. Let's just go deep dive in this one. So basically Xbox was maybe not going to even have Starfield Bethesda was trying their best to go and still work with PlayStation as a proper like independent exclusivity thing kind of how they did before with Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop and as well basically Microsoft had to essentially go and step on in to maintain as much as they can to uh, avoid PlayStation from getting a huge Bethesda monopoly. That alone is a crazy. I want to hear your thoughts on this as we kind of ramble. Like, literally go type something down below. I want to read them. This is nuts. So Phil Spencer confirms that Starfield was potentially going to fully just skip Xbox prior to the ZeniMax acquisition. Microsoft had to basically secure content to remain viable in the business itself. Starfield is coming out this September as an Xbox console exclusive, but there was a time when things almost played out very differently. So on the witness stand is part of today's trial between Microsoft and Activision Blizzard and the FTC, Xbox's head Phil Spencer confirmed that there were discussions about Starfield potentially even fully skipping Xbox consoles prior to this huge use acquisition of ZeniMax, aka like Bethesda. As part of Spencer's testimony was filled with questions about third-party exclusivity deals where the Xbox boss also confirmed that Sony signed Square Enix to a deal to keep Final Fantasy 16 as a part of the PlayStation 5 console exclusive. So basically right now there's like just drama all between wall everywhere. We're number one. All of these big, big game companies are basically they're doing these backroom deals. A good example is this, that Square Enix. They are not making an Xbox version as of like for at least for at least like we know it's kind of an exclusive. But it's also horrible for Xbox because obviously if you're Final Fantasy and Square Enix, you want those connections. You want to make those games. It may typically maybe sell better on PlayStation because they have a pretty good close long-term business connection. But still, if you're Xbox and you can still sell those games, like people will buy that on Xbox. It's not like it's like going to be zero people. But on the reverse side, it's crazy because PlayStation had all these crazy, crazy exclusivity deals with all these companies. And that's a big thing to go and note is that Xbox was like, bro, we're getting like completely kicked out of the market by all these proper platforms. It's kind of like one of those things where like, let's say you have hypothetical numbers, 60% of the market share, and then Xbox and Nintendo are 20 and 20. You obviously want to go and try the, like, the work the best you can with PlayStation to either get exclusivity deals or get additional marketing in these like types of promotions or the state of plays or the front plate, like, page of the PlayStation store to go and drive as many sales as you possibly can. And as well, if you're PlayStation, you want that too as well. It's like a win-win. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. But basically, these smaller companies such as, say, Xbox basically get shafted when it comes to this. So Spencer said Xbox needed to do a lot of work with a lot of partners given the competitive situation we had against the market leader, a.k.a. Sony. 
He also said Xbox was worried about losing Starfield after seeing Bethesda titles like Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop head exclusively towards PlayStation. It's kind of basically like, hey, the last two Bethesda games were entirely for, let's say, PlayStation, because duh, Solon was going to stop Starfield from being an exclusive for a year. And then you have this huge game that's the equivalency of Skyrim, maybe, potentially, who knows, it's been getting hyped up pretty well. Well, then what's supposed to happen then? Like, you hear about these deals and these markets, you're like, bro, I want to go and get this game on my console. I'm Phil Spencer. I want to get Xbox and make my Xbox user happy. But if you're PlayStation, you already have these like backroom deals and you have good partnerships or maybe you're paying out good money or whatever it might be. Uh, yeah, you're going to be a little bit worried about this stuff. At least in my opinion, I think you would. So basically back in 2020, when Microsoft announced its plans to buy Bethesda, journalist I'm Ran Khan first reported on Starfield's potential PlayStation exclusivity writing. Sony had been negotiating time exclusivity on Starfield as recently as a few months ago. Going to guess either those talks are done or the price suddenly went way, way up. Surely after in early 2021, the reports are to surface that Starfield won't head exclusively to the Xbox Series X and S. So basically right now they're confirming that PlayStation was trying to go and squeeze in their deal. They wanted to make sure that deal happened. But then as we kind of went and sat here, we're like, well, what's the point? You know, like, well, like we're spending $10 billion and PlayStation's going to get this game? No, we're going to have our own exclusivity ourselves. Or on the reverse side, like we can't keep on letting PlayStation getting away with all this type of stuff because we don't want them to have these games nonstop. It's really, really bad. So as the same, we're in the middle of the two day two of the trial that could determine the fate of Xbox's proposed acquisition as well. And this kind of goes back to the past few days where we've been seeing where Xbox is getting called out on their how, basically how they treated all these like few, like past prior games like think like Redfall or even Starfield where they are basically like, yeah we're going to buy these games to stay away from PlayStation which is kind of like the whole idea of this monopoly issue but once again it doesn't really clear PlayStation of all these other issues cuz PlayStation is doing these exclusivity deals and trying to go work on like these one year contracts or just basically don't allow the games on Xbox Good example is Final Fantasy 16. And, well, what is Xbox supposed to do? So I kind of feel like it's one of those things where both big console players are in the wrong. Like, I feel like they're both kind of being, like, trying their best to gain as much market shares. They probably should. I mean, that's a big, big business for billions upon billions of dollars. Uh, but at the same time, like, it just kind of seems like both of these are going kind of rough. Like, it just kind of seems like Xbox is trying to use Microsoft money to get these exclusive games. And they maybe just went a little bit too big on a $70 billion acquisition, while PlayStation, I think, was kind of maybe misleading their usage of being the number one market leader. And that basically probably made Xbox feel a bit spiteful because it's like, hey, we keep on losing on these deals. And the Microsoft had honchos who matter more than Xbox because obviously the Xbox guys have bosses, too. Uh, well, then they're not happy. So also keep on seeing this, too, as well. We're like they're kind of also once again showing up that this Starfield and these Redfall exclusives are really, really big evidence against this, act act against this Activision acquisition deal, as we've mentioned a few times, too as well because they've already gone through this process and they've already discussed how they want to go and buy out these different types of companies and it's just now just people are noticing this they're kind of calling this out as well when they keep on saying that they want to go keep call of duty as a multi-platform deal it kind of goes to show that well people just don't really know like they can't really trust that fully or think like five or ten years down the road so they basically did go and say though that call of duty away from playstation will be nonsensical microsoft says in a recent legal filing the franchise is profitable precisely because it generates sales on many different platforms, and the deal as structured can't be profitable for Microsoft without those PlayStation Call of Duty revenues, the company writes. Making Call of Duty exclusive would make for a worse game and enrage the gaming community because much of the game's popularity stems from the way it brings together players who use competing consoles, Microsoft Right. And that's kind of a big point, too, because if you have something like PlayStation and that is the biggest market, well, then guess what? You want to go and, well, make this. You want to make sure you can make as much money as you possibly can. But the FTC says in a recent redacted response filing, saying that the risk of angering the community was also present when Microsoft made ZeniMax franchises exclusive. Defendants put great stock in Microsoft's concerns about infuriating gamers if it were to foreclose rivals' access to Activision content, the FTC writes. But those same concerns did not stop the ZeniMax decision as we've been covering up on our channel a little bit too as well so it's kind of crazy to go and see this because once again we are seeing that this was going to maybe go and be like kind of almost like a petty thing microsoft wanted to go and spend this 10 billion dollars to make sure they kept on not getting locked out of these deals they say when we acquired ZeniMax, one of the most impetuous for that is that Sony had done a deal for Deathloop and Ghostwire to pay Bethesda to not ship those games on Xbox, said Spencer. So discussion about Starfield when we heard that Starfield was potentially also going to end up skipping Xbox, we can't be in a position as a third place console where we fall even farther behind on our content ownership, so we've had to secure content to remain viable in the business itself. 
So this actually dropped seven point five billion dollars to get Zenimax Studio, the parent company of the other Scrolls and Fallout Studio, Bethesda Softworks. And at the close of the deal, Microsoft promised Xbox and PC exclusives, and it has so far shipped Redfall with Starfield set for September two as well. There's also a big drama too as well, the Indiana Jones game two, which we'll talk about maybe later on. But it just kind of goes to show that well, there is some big big drama. So give me your thoughts and comments down below. This was kind of a big back and forth over here. Make sure you guys are subscribed with all this ongoing details. We have the Twitter and Twitch down below too as well. And I appreciate y'all so much for watching in the first place.